I'm Paula Eddie Wilcox and welcome to this episode of Game of Leadership, the podcast for curious leaders. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at the leadership journey of our guest and what unique traits bring them to be the leader they are today. Who knows what we're going to discover together, so I hope you enjoy the episode. Welcome to today's episode of Game of Leadership, the podcast for curious leaders. Today, I'm joined by the fabulous Siobhan Mears. And, um, oh, I'm so excited, Siobhan. This has been a long time coming. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Excited to be here. Oh, so pleased. Well, before we get into our chat today, because I am pretty sure we're going to really get into this and um, have to stop ourselves. (laughs) So that we don't go into um, episodes uh, or the second and third episode that we're going to have with you. Because as always, in true Game of Leadership style, Siobhan is with us for three episodes. And I'll explain what we're going to do today in a minute. I want to give a full introduction to Siobhan and tell you a little bit about why she's with us today. Um, So forgive me because I'm going to read this little bit. So... In 2018, following a successful 16-year career working for global corporates at board level in both London and the Middle East, Siobhan decided to launch the Mears Collective. And if you haven't heard of it, it's fantastic. And I really implore you to go have a look. And um, if you need those sorts of services, and I know Siobhan's going to tell us all about what she does later, um, then please do go for it because I've I've worked with Siobhan and it's brilliant. That's all I'm going to say for now. Her key objective was to help female coaches and consultants build strong foundations on which to expand their business and operate from their zone of genius. She does this beautifully and has selected a fantastic team of like-minded people to help her do that. Siobhan understands what it takes to grow a successful business, especially when it comes to strategy, processes, systems, and team management, and believes these are vital to the foundations to streamline and scale your business effectively. The Mears Collective is driven by passion for empowering women to elevate their business and grow their income, enabling them to free up time to do the things that are important to them. Siobhan also volunteers as a board trustee for Empower Her, a non-profit organisation supporting girls through mother loss, a heartfelt cause as a result of her own experience of losing her mother at a very young age. Outside of work, Siobhan loves nothing more than spending time with her husband and two young daughters, enjoying all things to do with personal development, travel, forest walks, yoga, meditation, and a good cuppa. That's yeah. for anyone who's wondering. Um, I, uh, you know, Siobhan, you're a woman after my own heart. There's so much in that little introduction that I know we're going to dig into over the next three episodes. And um, if it's all right with you, I might swap the cuppa for a cup of coffee. Of course. Yeah. Any cuppa that suits you. <laughs> brilliant. Well, it's absolutely brilliant to have you here. Thank you. Um, let's let's dig in. So mm. we always sort of think about your leadership story and how you get to be the leader that you are today, doing what you're doing, the why, all of that, you know, because I'm a strong believer in purpose, as you know. Yeah. Um, so we would love to hear your story and of course in episode three with you which is in fact episode 23 of game of leadership um we'll be thinking about your pivotal moments that make you who you are today so um don't worry if you do cross over a little bit onto those but uh we'll we'll really go into that in um, a couple of episodes time so I'm quiet now and let you go for it. Yeah, lovely. Well, thank you so much for having me, Paula. I've been really excited to get involved uh, with your podcast. I love the topic of leadership um, and especially female leadership. Um, yeah. So I would be honoured to share my story with you. So you've touched on some of it in the introduction, which is great. Mm. So I started out in a support role in, in the corporate world, um, supporting actually uh, senior leaders. 
Um, and they were board level and also CEO level um, executives uh, working in the oil and gas or the finance sector and luxury goods. So I had a great you know, stepping ground, stepping stone into leadership. So watching mm -hmm. and learning from the, the best in, out there and, yep. and supporting them and, and doing so in a fast paced environment where attention to detail really matters, where, mm -hmm. um, you know, making sure the team are on board literally uh, with, with, with the values and the mission of the company. Um, and it, I was, it was my responsibility to make sure that everything ran like clockwork for these people mm -hmm. um, and work very closely with them, you know, being present in board meetings compiling board papers um mm. you know lots of you know arranging travel to and from senior meetings so i had a great insight there um and, and i did learn from the best um, as to how to manage these stresses and you know some of these people had some wonderful values and missions as well mm. um, outside of the workplace so i got to perform some fantastic relationships that are still part of my life now but at that point, I didn't really see myself as the leader. I did, mm. saw myself definitely very much in a support role. And I continued in that vein. And um, I was quite happy at that point, continued for 16 years, as you touched on. Um, but as, as time went on, one of the pivotal moments, not, not all of them, so we'll cover that <laughs> later on. But, um, there, 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 you know, there'd be different turning points in my life, like, like mm. many people. Um, I continued in this vein, enjoyed what I did, but uh, motherhood, which can be very interlinked with lots of female leadership for change mm -hmm. at different points in their life. So yeah. um, once I had my daughter, I realised that I didn't want to work in the corporate world uh, as, as a support employee. Mm -hmm. I really, I really reevaluated what I wanted to do and I decided to step into my power and set up business for myself. So really step into that leadership role for myself which was a complete u-turn of what i was doing and supporting others but now i was taking that that the ownership of mm -hmm. setting up my own yeah. business um and, and really going out there and, and getting the clients um very much doing a similar role um but doing it for myself so yeah. i set up my business in 2018 providing business support services um to senior leaders um and those that had set up their own business and it's something that i enjoyed i was still very much um continuing in, in a support vein but i decided to expand my business further i quickly became fully booked and that's where the leadership part really came in mm -hmm. um, i i then expanded my business to take on a team so an expert team of other support um, staff uh, so that they could, as my freelancers, my team, we supported mm -hmm. further um, amounts of individuals with their businesses. Um, and that, and that you know, really enabled me to understand what it meant like to be a leader. Um, I wasn't just transacting time for money as a freelancer. Mm -hmm. I was now setting up my own agency. I was really stepping into my power um, as a leader to make sure that I was managing the team effectively, also yeah. managing the client's needs, but also operating the business from a high level and what that meant to lead the business forward, really tap in and understand what my own business vision was, what mm. my mission was or is, my why that you touched on and, you know, what my purpose is. And, and like yourself, I'm very much uh, about that. I think we all have a purpose um, and a mission, um, you know, to, to make change of some sort. And that's something that I really started to dig into at that mm. point. Um, and, and, you know, for me personally, I felt like it just came naturally to me. It, it was something that excites, excited me and, and still does now. And I've continued to expand and grow the business in different ways. Mm. Um, but it's something that really excites me. And it just is something that came natural, naturally to me. While I did have, I must touch on, I did work in a support role in the mm. corporate world. I still had in some of the positions team of support staff underneath me. So I had... Yeah had elements of management, but it was very different to driving the ship of a business yourself and, mm. and, and really taking ownership there. And um, yeah, that was a very, uh, a very changing, changing point in my career to actually yeah. step into power myself. Oh, I love that. And you've said it, um, I think about three times, um, Siobhan, stepping into your power. Yeah. What a, what a powerful and empowering phrase to use. Um, you know, what? when did that come about for you? Or how did that come about for you, yeah. that phrase? And what does it really mean for you? Yeah, so, yeah, I have touched on that a few times. Uh, yeah. I think it's probably because I 
um, I really feel quite strongly about female empowerment. Um, mm. And I've since niched my business to support female coaches and consultants. Mm. Um, and the reason for that is um, I, I learned a lot from setting up the business on maternity leave. So I yeah. um, was on maternity leave with my baby in 2018 and decided that, you know, this is pre-COVID, pre-flexible working, mm. um, and, and that just wasn't necessarily available to me at that point. And yeah. I decided to take, you know, the bull by the horns or, you know, pull the reins myself and, and, and control my own destiny mm. uh, by deciding how I wanted to live my life and how much time I wanted to spend around my child. And I knew that the only way to make that happen was to define this role and this position and uh, this way of working for myself. So that's why I felt empowered to, uh, to, to make that change. You know, before mm. my role, was, as I touched on, was more in the support, but very much working alongside senior leaders. Mm. But um, I, I felt at that point that perhaps I could be pigeonholed and, you know, that's what you'll do you know ongoing in the corporate world so really take pulling you know pulling those reins and making that change is how I would define stepping into my power yeah I love that and you used the word destiny there um Siobhan which I I love and um, and I've made a few people laugh when I say this over the last two and a half three years since opening my own business and um I use the expression master of my own destiny love that love that <laughs> But when I say it, it's not about this big empire or anything like that. It's yeah. just that piece around exactly what you're talking about, stepping mm. into your own power and being that master of your own destiny. Mm. Because let's face it, we all have a choice. Yes, there's things like having to pay the mortgage and the bills, etc. Yeah. You know, earning enough to live. And often, you know, the security of an employed role um, you know, helps us to achieve that. And it's a real scary moment when you step from that employed role into being self-employed and not having that bit of security blanket over you in that sense. However, of course, we all know that uh, the job market now, especially since COVID, is very volatile um the great resignation as they've called it people mm. are voting with their feet and going to either other employers that offer something much better mm. which i absolutely applaud people for doing because we do have choices and um those that are choosing to to start their own businesses in in whatever shape or form that looks like for them it's exciting times yeah, definitely. It is really exciting. And I think, you know, I can definitely resonate with what you're saying there. Mm. And also with this, this you know, uh, shift in the tide, I think it, it had to happen at some point. Mm. Um, you know, the modern way of working, you know, there's a lot of demands on, on people generally, but I'll, I'll speak about the female um, leadership um, mm. element. From, from my perspective, there's so much demand on on the modern working woman uh, yeah. or mother um, to do it all, be it all, have it all, and tick all yeah. those boxes. But it's just not possible when you're working in, you know, perhaps a corporate role, working all the hours. It's hard mm. to, to to juggle it all. So really, being able to control, like you say, the master of your destiny of how you, how you show up, how you work. Mm. You know, it, you know. I, I feel it's quite outdated the fact that somebody needs to show up at their desk and be you know visible there Monday to Friday yeah. nine to five yeah. to mean that they're doing a good job I, I I know over the past four years in business I can you know categorically say that a great job can be done outside of that you know yeah. it can be definitely done you know obviously you need to be available during certain working times but that old-fashioned way of working is not working for the people and it's quite clear when we talk about the great resignation that people are going for different packages from, from companies mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's about flexible working. It's about health and lifestyle and mental well-being, mm -hmm. which what, you know, the old way of working was not and is not conducive to, to yeah. that balance. Yeah. You know, I saw a great um, post actually on LinkedIn the other day and it really made me chuckle in a positive way. Um, and I wish I could remember who it was. So all credit to you out there if you're listening to this. Um, it was something along the lines of, if you think I'm trying to steal your employees, you're absolutely right, because I'm offering X, Y and Z that you're not. 
And it, it was that blunt, that open and that honest. And it, it was brilliant, Siobhan. Amazing. Be careful because they're coming to get you. I've just heard the sirens. Hello. <laughs> This oh, is no. I mean I'm in London, you see, so this is this yeah, is quite absolutely. Cool. <laughs> all part of the course. Yeah. I love it. Um yeah. you know, so it it's really interesting that um in terms of the corporate side of things, yeah. um organizations are having to wake up and realize mm -hmm. that if they don't engage their staff, if they don't look after their well-being, if they don't, you know give them that flexibility and empower them to be flexible and agile mm -hmm. in their roles, then people are going to go somewhere else, vote with their feet and get it yeah. in a place and to, to their liking. So there's more of that master of their own destiny stuff going on than we really realize now. There is. There um, is. Yeah. I have seen, exciting. yeah, that, that's definitely the way things are going now. So I think, you know, since in 2018, that wasn't necessarily the case. There was definitely yeah. people out there doing it, of course, mm. before then, but it, it wasn't, you know, it's still considered a bit unusual and, and you know, wow, you're leaving your job, you're setting up your own business, you know, yeah. but I think uh, now it's, it's, it's not unheard of at all. It's, it's quite, it's, it's becoming more common or people are freelancing whatever mm. way that works well for them and it's it's great to see people feeling as you said empowered to yeah. to make those changes because we are in control like you said of of our lives you know mm. not not everything's done to us you know or, or yeah. for us you know we we, we can uh, take control and just those decisions of how you want to work what do you want to do um, yeah. and and in terms of leadership how do you want to lead your team um, mm. how do you want your business to look like you know as my business mm. grows how do I want my team to work with me you know am I mm. expecting them to be chained to their desks or you know am I practicing what I preach and, and I, I really do remind myself to make sure that I'm uh, working with the team in, in the same way that I would like uh, my clients to work with me so respecting boundaries is, is very important um, mm. yeah that's that's crucial really to me is respecting boundaries I've learned the hard way with clients that don't uh it's it's yeah. it's about defining those boundaries you know being available in emergencies of course but sometimes you have to have that off off switch um of an yes. evening or you know yeah. if you're going on holiday and it's it's about having that respect and boundaries and again it's all about getting the work done and, and delivering mm -hmm. high standards by whatever means that that is to you if that means some people want to pick up their laptop in the evening and do extra work then that's up to them Exactly. And, you know, you touch on something great there, boundaries that are so important. You know, in coaching, we talk about that an awful lot um, in that we can set these boundaries. What so many of us are so bad at is upholding them when yeah. someone tries to step over them. So being able to, um, yeah, uphold is a good word and yeah. be strong even when you say, no, I'm not picking up the laptop and doing that tonight. Um, and then the, the answer comes back and yes, but we really need it for tomorrow morning. Yeah. We've got to stay strong and say, yes, but this is my own time now this evening. And if that's the boundary that you've set for yourself, like you say, Siobhan, there's lots of people actually who are quite happy to, um, turn the laptop off about 4.30, spend a few hours with their family, you mm -hmm. know, and the evening routine with the kids, getting them to bed, all of those things. Or, you know, those without children wanting to go to the gym, um, look after themselves, whatever it is, their exercise routine, mm -hmm. etc. And then come back and log on again a bit later. Um, yeah. You know, for many of us working globally, that means they they catch people that are on different time zones with them, perhaps in the US, um, where we're based in the UK. You get um, to talk to some of them in the evening. You know, so there are advantages, and we all, um, I hope now, can decide how we want to show up as leaders ourselves. Definitely, I can. Um definitely resonate with what you're saying there at times I do pick up my laptop in the evening but that's a choice it's not yes. because I'm, I'm, I'm going to somebody else's demand you know mm. it, it's a case mm. of me for example I had a call with somebody um, in Australia you know and I had that call mm. at 8pm uh, it all varies there's different 
time to yeah. so I accommodate um, or if I want to do some work on my own business if I'm particularly busy with clients but that's that's a choice isn't it it's, it's yeah. not someone pushing your boundaries and I think that's really come from learning the hard way mm -hmm. initially mm -hmm. you know I I as many people have tendencies to be people pleasers uh, yeah. so I um, would often want to just accommodate my clients, do anything, whatever mm -hmm. it takes, keep them happy. And by, by all means, those are still my goals. Um, yeah. I realise that there's sometimes, unfortunately, those boundaries can be pushed and pushed and yes. pushed and pushed. Some people don't really understand when to stop. So it's about working with the right type of person that's going to um, yeah. respect those boundaries. But also um, it's important for us to... Um, you know, push back and, and manage people's mm -hmm. expectations, mm -hmm. isn't it? As to it when, is. you know, what what's the turnaround time needed and so on. Yeah. And sometimes we have to reevaluate those those expectations and reset them. You know, we talk about contracting and recontracting in coaching. Yeah, you yeah. do need to do that in life when you're leading your life, your business, whatever it might be that you're leading, yeah. um, you know, to make sure that, again, we're looking after those boundaries um, and things don't get too much because we can't always predict the workloads and how mm -hmm. things are going to come in and when as much as we try to plan ahead for that. Um, it's not always possible. And um, you mentioning Australia there um, and, you know, sort of making that choice to take a, a call late in the evening for yeah. you and, you know, first thing for them uh, made me smile because I recently made the choice to get up at 2 a.m. and deliver yeah. a 3 a.m. workshop to Singapore that was 10 a.m., oh, you know, yeah. because it was the you know it was a great thing to do and i'm so yeah. glad i did it it was such a fantastic workshop on resilience with this team of of women um it? and it, it was just brilliant so you know we all have those choices that we can make about the things that we do and yeah. don't want to do that do and don't fit with how we want to show up yeah definitely yeah you're making that decision it's your choice you're taking that opportunity and and again that leans into flexible working flexible working yeah. doesn't mean just working four hours and saying bye you know yeah. i'm clocking off yeah. it means working around your life and, and, yeah. and around your goals and, and what your vision is for your business yeah that's so important um you know gosh we we could talk all day but i do have one more question for you siobhan so um you talked about some of the leaders that you've worked with and the purpose the vision the values that came in and um, that you saw in them so what who are or you don't have to name but what are some of the things that have inspired you from other leaders throughout you know those times working with other people and I suspect you've got dozens of them actually that you're working with yeah. now in the business mm, yeah definitely um yeah there's so many that I've come across uh, working mm. now in my business but also in the past that um you know I still learned from um mm. and I think I think the ones that made the most impact on me I mean many of them have incredible success like incredible yeah. success stories They're just very impressive people very intelligent people um, yeah. and, and that those things are impressive but most of all which stands out to me are the heart-led leaders and i don't mean yeah. uh, i mean ultimately these are people that have compassion for others um and that they you know they really are aligned and uh, you know working closely with the people at a lower grade in the business, you mm -hmm. know, the more juniors, more, more yeah. junior people, they have respect in the way that they, they speak with them, they value others' inputs, they really give back in, in different mm -hmm. ways. Like one, one CEO made sure that, you know, he made sure that everybody had uh, a takeaway lunch on a, on a Friday. Uh, it's mm -hmm. just these little gestures. It's before they were doing this type of thing in companies in London mm. um, he, he wanted to make sure he gave back he knew that people were working hard um, he, the, small gestures like this he he would always make sure he had conversations with each person whenever yeah. he bumped into them at the you know the, the in the tea room but he would always have a great understanding and appreciation for others and and I have that now with clients that I'm working with um, mm. and I think when, when you show appreciation and gratitude for others and the work yeah. that they do and empathy for, for, the, for, for what they're going through or what they're doing mm. for you in the business, I think that goes a long way. People want to do more for you. People mm. are on board more 
with what your goals are. They want to work with you in you know, helping you succeed. And I think that's the same for somebody setting up their own business. If you can carry through that type of attitude, I think it goes a long mm. way because they're remembered for how they make people feel. Yeah, I really love that, Siobhan. And it's the, for me, it's the difference between a leader and a, a great leader. You know, Definitely. having that, that softer skill side um, and sadly, you can't teach that really, because if you haven't got empathy, you haven't got empathy, you know, um, being empathetic towards others, being understanding brings in that flexibility again. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, that respect that you talked about is so important. And interestingly, you know, when organizations again are beginning to wake up that when they're recruiting they are starting to yes of course the hard skills that you need the technical capability the intelligence to show up and and know your stuff mm -hmm. um, in terms of expertise knowledge all of those things yes they're still really important to be able to carry out a role but they want to see the softer skills side as well, um, you know, and, and wouldn't it be lovely if, hallelujah, all of the, the leaders that we've come across in our experience, um, and we don't need to name any names, but I'm sure with a nod of the head, we've both come across them. Yeah. Who's <laughs> <laughs> not watching, we are both nodding our heads. <laughs> um, you know, we've come across those that don't have that softer side mm. and um, it makes for a very unpleasant working environment. Definitely, it really does. And uh, yeah, I think we've definitely all endured, endured that, or most of us have, especially mm. if you've had a, a, you know, a, a relatively decent amount of time working in the corporate world or even with your own clients. I mean, mm. sometimes we can um, attract that when we first set up our business because we're just creating a duplicate model of, of uh, yeah. our former corporate life and just serving in a different way. Um, but yeah. I think as, as my business has evolved and, and transformed and I've really, like I touched on before, looked at my values as, mm. a, as, a, as an individual, but also as a business, I, I now really make a conscious effort from learning the hard way of people that yeah. are difficult or yeah, unpleasant to work with. I, I don't mean they're an unpleasant person, but difficult. It's not a pleasant yeah, experience. Yeah. Everything's a challenge. Everything's an issue. And you know, it's just it's like sticking mud, you know, trying to, mm -hmm. to get through the day. And I just, I think life is too short. And I think a lot yeah. of people have woke up to that um, uh, since COVID and the challenges mm -hmm. that people have experienced. And so they realise that they don't want to endure that and you don't have to. So I personally make a conscious effort now to really be selective of who I work with. And then, mm -hmm. uh, because before, I think when you first set up a business, we are very excited, to, whoever works with mm -hmm. us, yeah, yeah, come, you know, come on board. But that can all often be to your detriment because you can spend extra time trying to make things work with difficult leaders. Um, mm -hmm. and, and instead, when you're working with people that are in alignment with you, like the great leaders that I've spoken of, mm -hmm. it's, everything just flows so much easier. You want yes. to go that extra mile for them. It's enjoyable. You wake up in the morning, you're excited about what next? What, you know, what projects are we going to work on mm -hmm. next? Any ideas I can come up with for you? Um, and, and it just flows so much better. So it's, it's you know something that I've learned is to be selective about who you work with because you're mm. letting them into your personal space and it, and it has to work mutually. Yeah, yeah, mutual is a lovely word to use, and I love you talking about flow. There, um, flow is a, a lovely way to put it, um, and you know I'm very lucky to have that in the in the uh, the teams that I'm working with at the moment and it makes such a huge difference doesn't it really does really does it's so much more enjoyable <laughs> yeah absolutely look Siobhan um you know we could go on talking <laughs> for hours and hours so um I'm going to draw this episode to a close knowing in in my up my sleeve that we've got another two fantastic episodes to enjoy with you. So thank you so much for sharing your leadership journey to date, um, leading to where you are right now and the leader you choose to show up as on a daily basis. Um, there's so much great stuff in there that we've talked about, stepping into your power, master of your own destiny, respect, 
flow, agility. Goodness me, there's, there's just so much fantastic stuff in there. So I hope everybody's enjoyed that and um, you'll all have your own takeaways. But for now, Siobhan, thank you so much. And I really look forward to chatting to you next week. Thank you so much, Paula. It's been my pleasure. You're very welcome. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Game of Leadership, the podcast for curious leaders. Today, we listen to the leadership journey of our guest and how they got to be where they are today. Now, in the chats, we talked about all sorts of different things and there are lots of bits and pieces in there that are going to mean something different to each and every one of you. You will all have your own unique takeaways. So I encourage you to do a bit of reflection now and see what this might mean for your leadership moving forwards. I'm Paula Eddie Wilcox, and I look forward to seeing you on Game of Leadership, a podcast for curious leaders next week. Bye for now.